welcome back to another episode of Reinventing Finance. Um, as usual, I'm not all by myself. I have my lovely co-host with me, Tom. Tom, how are you? Yeah, thank you, Nick. I'm very looking forward to our conversation. And as usual, we're not all by ourselves. Um, today, we managed to get someone um, from a little bit further, um, from a little bit further eastward. And we have with us um, Saeed um, from Decisive. Happy to have you on, on our show. How are you? Likewise. Thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm actually excited to share oh, my talk with, thank your audience, you for... with yourself as well. Of, of course. And thank you for taking the time and, and, and sharing your view. But maybe... Um, for, for those of um, our listeners who haven't already clicked through and uh, checked out your LinkedIn profile, why don't you um, briefly introduce yourselves and tell us um, who you are and what you do exactly? For sure. Uh, so as you just mentioned, I mean, my name is Sad Kawalda and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Decisive. Decisive is an insurtech platform which operates in the Middle East. However, it is originally spin off from the University of Oxford where I finished my PhD over there in artificial intelligence. And talking about Switzerland and Germany, I've actually like studied at Tübingen in, in near Stuttgart. Obviously. <laughs> Very lovely, small city. And uh, mainly like I was trained uh, to be an engineer, but uh, for nearly like eight or nine years, I've worked in various uh, management positions at different consulting firms, a few corporations, including uh, Microsoft and as well a few uh, SMEs and uh, startups. Mele was based in the UK, where originally we kicked off Decisive, but since the gap, which is available in the MENA region, when it comes to the insure tech sector, we have uh, started working specifically in the Middle East and focused at the Saudi Arabia market. Understood. And, and you're, based, you're based now where? Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Riyadh. So you're sitting in Riyadh now. I am, I am technically actually at the moment in Jordan, in Amman, where we have most of our technical team. However, I'm flying in the morning to Riyadh. Okay, Jordan, okay. Awesome. So if you, you've already alluded a little bit to it, but um, we we always like to um, also understand the, the person, right? Um, behind the product and behind the company. If you're kind of looking back on your career or the kind of traction of the company so far, what what were some kind of decisive moments, some milestones achieved that you kind of look back and say, this was pivotal, this was relevant to 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 me, and and maybe even some some learnings uh, yeah. from that before we kind of dig a little bit more into Definitely. Uh, decisive. To be honest, when we started Decisive, myself and my co-founder, Mohammed Nabhan, we were mainly working in the healthcare scape. We were trying to help hospitals in optimizing their inventory by predicting uh, uh, their supply chain and making sure that they get only the supply which they need for the patient flow that they have. However, that was quite a, a product which was a bit uh, like in the future when it comes to the market where we were trying to serve the Middle East. They were like a bit behind when it comes to optimizing the healthcare system. So obviously, like as part of the journey of any entrepreneur, you need to keep pivoting to see basically what's the problem, which is worth solving and where the customers, they're actually wanting you to solve that problem. And we've reached like that specific uh, milestone, which is discovering that not only insurance, actually like corporates, they're actually suffering when it comes to their relationship with the insurance companies, when it comes to health insurance. And they want a bit of support when it comes to dealing with the insurance companies so they can get the best benefits for the best price. And here we've just decided to build a product that fits their needs. And uh, we were quite lucky that the, the, the conversion rate for our customers was quite very high once we have developed the product reaching like nearly uh, 5% of the Saudi market uh, uh, market share, like when it comes to the health insurance. And obviously this is a massive milestone in any entrepreneur life, especially like when it comes to the company, like you building a product and then over than 500 different companies are using this product. This is a quite of a validation when it comes to the importance of such product. So I believe this is probably the most important milestone in our like journey as a company. Obviously, in the personal level, I always was fascinated about artificial intelligence. And prior to Decisive, I really wanted to do a PhD where I was focused on machine learning and building these algorithms for commercial use. And uh, pro probably like the, the, the biggest milestone which I have achieved on the personal level 
was to be part of a big project where we built something very interesting, got uh, at the end being sold to one of the commercial companies to go and commercialize it, to be used in one of the system which called deep brain stimulation. It's something which is very important for the Parkinson patient people. Awesome, awesome. Um, you've you've already mentioned a little bit. Can you can you walk us um, a little bit more into um, you know what you guys do at uh, at Decisive, and maybe we'll start at what is the problem that your cus you know who are your customers and what problems do you solve? For sure. Uh, so in the in Saudi Arabia, just as we're focusing at this market at at the moment, the corporates they are having an issue when they want to renew their the health insurance policy for their employees. Mm -hmm. The main issue that they are dealing with, that the premiums get increased a year after another year. Sometimes the increase goes to 50% increase of premium. And that is obviously linked to insurance companies doing monitoring for how the employees are interacting with the insurance policy, calculating the loss ratio. And then at the end of the day, obviously like trying to make a, a healthy profit for, for them as insurance companies. And at the end of the day, the corporate, they're actually the ones who are paying the high premium at the, at the end of the day. So we have identified this gap in the market, which is monitoring specifically how the employees are interacting to the health insurance policy, and then understanding very well the usage of the insurance uh, policy by the employees of any corporate and doing as well negotiation with the insurance company so they can get the best value for money. Because very often uh, companies get insurance policy with multiple benefits or medical network, the employees are actually not using most of that medical network. So Decisive goes and customize the insurance policy details in a way that it can be leveraged to the maximum by the employees of each corporate. And at the same time, the corporate can pay the fair price for this health insurance policy. And is that in, let's say, um, and, and mind you, I'm I'm not an employee benefits specialist and certainly not in the Saudi Arabian market, but I would I would assume isn't that the job of one of the big brokers, commercial brokers that that go to, you know, that that take your current program, makes a tender to the different insurance companies, um, has a view about which, you know, how to manage premium costs and and potentially also recommend on which type of benefits are likely um to be kind of taken out is is does that not exist in saudi arabia right now that type uh, of what? intermediary great point actually Nick. Uh, Nick. Uh, to be honest we are working with a few brokers as partners in saudi market and these brokers they're actually like one of a uh, few like our most important partners to reach like our milestone when it comes to market penetration however when it comes to saudi market there is a quite a unique dynamic for the health insurance policies and how obviously the government regulations is actually regulating the health insurance for the different employees. And one of the things that we have like missed as a, we have found out as a gap, brokers are actually like very much doing a quotation comparison, getting basically different quotations from different companies and just summarizing it for the, for the customer without sure. going into too de technical details on how to customizing the insurance policy. Okay. So, so like, I mean, Ion and Marsh, obviously a few of the biggest players when it comes to the brokerage, they're actually operating in Saudi Arabia. However, a few of their customers actually, I, I don't want to disclose the name, but it's a quite, it's a policy which exceeds a hundred million dollars uh, yearly. They're working with one of these biggest uh, brokers and they're using as well, like our platform, uh, mm -hmm. the size of the platform, because like the platform in itself, it's designed to help HR or health insurance policy at the corporate in a way that they, it can simplify the very complicated insurance policy language, which insurance company and the brokers speak and uh, corporates don't speak in a way that it can be like uh, uh, like of assistant to these HR managers or like the health insurance officers who are dealing with health insurance for the entire policy. So like they can have at the end of the day, a simplified version of the health insurance policy that they can interact with it and if, as well influence in a way that Decisive is offering that platform to outsource the entire health insurance policy, let's say renewal for these different corporates. So I, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, I, I've, I've worked and, and lived in multiple countries, the US, the UK, and even like a few European countries. 
and probably the channels between insurance companies, healthcare providers, and corporates are uh, are more digitized when it comes to the developed countries, which makes the broker work much easier. Well, I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, I I I don't I I don't know. I I I wouldn't put my uh, I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, because like I, I mean, I'm comparing it to the NHS in the UK, for example. Mm -hmm. All the data is available publicly if the client gives access to whatever broker to get that data. However, sure. when it comes to the data, like you know, handling and data availability and data cleaning, all of these different issues when it comes to the Middle East or Saudi Arabia, like which is the market we're focusing on, there is still area of growth in there. And I believe decisive and what we have built as a technology, it actually helps bridging that gap obviously till the market is more digitized and the process is, is easier so that that you know let's say like different stakeholders are are actually like you know contributing in a better way to the benefits of the corporates at the end of the day and their employees um i think at, at least for me and tom you know please interrupt if if if, if you've already uh, figured it out because it's um, maybe for me it would be quite helpful to just kind of if you walk us through the step by step process maybe even without ai without automation it's just these are the steps that a poor sod a poor human would have to do in order to come to a similar insight um of understanding usage customization etc and at these steps we've injected technology and enable you know sometimes it's just it's it's AI. Sometimes it's not AI. So just to kind of understand the the kind of steps required to to create that that benefit for for our current customers. For our current customers. So you know, I'm a, I'm a customer. I have my employees. I have this insurance policy, right? Um, how does the process look? For example, you you're like a customer. For example, you are the HR manager of a company sure. with five thousand employees. Yes. Uh, and you have two documents that you have always uh, available for you. One, something we call a claim experience. And mm -hmm. the other one, it's called active list. The active list is simply the list of employees that you have at the company. With sure. their details, ages, all of these different things. The other one, which is the claim experience, it comes in form of PDF, sometimes a scan, sometimes photos of how your employees interacted with insurance policy the previous years, up to three years back. So what happens? You get these two, two documents. And you simply throw them at the platform that we have built for you. Simply you log in, it's a web application, very user-friendly. The web platform like gets all the different details which is related to your health insurance policy using some computer vision and OCR in addition like to some data processing. So we learn what are the what is the medical network that you have in your health insurance policy? What are the benefits? What is the usage for the health insurance policy over the years? Uh, like, for example, the list of employees and their details, all of these different details, which are quite important. And then it just summarizes it in uh, analytics, like uh, various like figures that can make it, make it easier for mm -hmm. a, an HR manager to understand their health insurance policy and how they have been interacting in the previous years. Once that process is done, obviously, like we, we part of our like uh, understanding for the market, we understand very well how underwriting process happens at the insurance companies. We have expert underwriters, uh, like from the Middle East and Saudi market specifically, in addition to some machine learning models that does the prediction for the completion of the claims. For example, if you supply six months of a claim experience, there are other six months to predict. We do mm -hmm. predicting prediction for that. So once that is, is done and the, the prediction is done, we, we we do prediction how much your health insurance policy will be costing you next year. And this is quite important for you to do budgeting for the health insurance renewal and to understand as well very well what benefits you have, you know, you, you have used, what benefits you don't use, et cetera. Then we do recommendations as part of our offerings where we actually tell you that based on your data and the documents when it comes to the claim experience, it comes in forms of hundreds of pages. And it's quite complex like to go uh, in every single one of them unless you're an insurance expert. But when it comes to corporates, they don't have insurance experts working sure. with them. They have HR people. Uh, and and uh, what happens, the, the platform by itself, it uses different optimization algorithms, which suggests what are the benefits, the medical networks, the coverage, 
the the co-payments, the details which are related to the health insurance policy that fits your employees in a way that you can get the best benefits for the best price, the best value for the best price when it comes to the health insurance policy. And finally, generate it in a document or in like in a form of a an, an entire insurance policy. And that can be, let's say, like the baseline that you can use when you go to the health insurance company to tell them, I want this specifically. Mm -hmm. Obviously, at the end of the day, our model uses very like uh, various underwriting methods in order to come up with these different numbers. And that actually helps, you know, the, the negotiation to be more transparent and much easier between the HR person, or like the HR manager and the, the let's say like the underwriting person or the, the insurance company, which is a quite like a complicated process at the moment because what happens, you submit the, your, your two documents and you get quotation. To be honest, very often we have we have many customers who are HR managers. They don't understand the complex details in, inside the the this, this of course. And and what happens? Okay, they push on reducing the price by eliminating a few things, but you're not gonna reach at the end to optimized way of getting exactly what you're gonna need. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're aiming at. So if and I'm just trying to play this back. So one step, you 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 have a list of all your employees, you mm -hmm. get some form of reporting from the insurer about the usage of the policy, um, which probably has um, a, and, th and that, for example, I'm not sure whether that is something that you could even share in, in, in for data privacy reasons in, in Europe. Um, I assume you have medical record, uh, you know, medical procedures, um, medication, et cetera, on the policy on a per employee basis, I yeah. guess. Right, I, I um, agree with you about the sharing a bit. Uh, I mean, maybe just uh, carry on, and then I'll, I'll just comment on the data protection. And, and so I think I think one of the steps is obviously extracting this information in a, a, a kind of into a database, right? That is relational in in in, in some form. Um, then you, because of some some experience, you can estimate future development because you only have a time frame you know you've mentioned you know six months what happens to the next six months now in order to map that towards you then would have to have built yourself some form of model around the types of coverages available in the market some estimated price points from previous quotes or um, a retro fitting of your own underwriting engine to then kind of say listen you so, so do you like recreate the products like price comparison websites do of um, of the existing players in the market? Is that what what you need to do in order to match, let's say, their existing usage towards uh, so, products in the market? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, because we are dealing with corporate insurance, uh, it's quite very difficult here in the Middle East market to get like a, a quotation. Or, or like instant quotation it's not yes, possible yes exactly yeah uh, so so our we are like the instant quotation is available for individual insurance and for small uh, enterprises where yep. you using book rate however when it comes to us we are actually focusing at around 85% of the market which is big corporates mm -hmm. when it comes to that our way of like what you present like to our customers is indicative pricing of their fair price when it comes to their health insurance if they want to renew it However, it does not actually show the difference between different insurance companies. Understood. Okay. This is our current phase. We, we are actually like doing integration with multiple insurance companies. So the entire renewal of the policy happens through the platform. So it is like more like an aggregator for corporates. And this is Understood. a phase of development that we're going toward at the moment. Um, and... Because the AI obviously is has been a buzzword with the advent of Gen AI. You know now everyone. How how much of it is where does AI really play its part? Where is it just just statistics? Where is it you know where 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 and and to me and please you know I am I don't have a PhD in 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 that kind of stuff but. To me, the difference is kind of where you don't exactly tell the model what to do and what to spit out and where you just kind of let it run. Um, but what and what aspects of that product or what aspects of that product would not work without injecting AI? 
Very it would be prohibitively more expensive to do. Yeah. Let me just answer this question after talking about the data privacy. I agree with you yes. very much. I mean, like sharing the details, which is linked to individuals is actually like prohibited. Even like in the Middle East market, you cannot share details which are related to Nick or Tom or Saad because obviously that's a privacy when it comes to you, our our personal data. However, we we do fully anonymized like data when it comes to the active list, which is the list of employees and link it to the medical data that is available in the claim experience. However, we don't know these who are these people. These are the employees. It's anonymous numbers and like mainly like as-, as Okay, as, so the- the medical data is is not on an individual basis. It's just there's been, I don't, you know, whatever. There's been twenty x of medication ordered, but it's not actually linked to an individual. Is that what the data? It is anonymous, exactly. Okay. And like you know, when we kicked off the company, we kicked it off the UK, and obviously the GDPR in the UK is quite complex and it's quite a, a baseline for multiple even countries and, and and regions of the world so we've just been very sure like to adhere to that which by eventually like made us like you know uh, like when it comes to data privacy as well adhering to the local authorities and their data protection uh, like you know a guideline just coming back to the ai uh, question uh, nick to be honest with you like Yes, I have a PhD in machine learning and plenty, probably like seven or eight of our uh, employees, they have as well like PhDs in machine learning. However, we're not the type of company who wants to build a very fancy coat and then make it uh, like make, like make me, for example, like a person or like a, a specific like uh, organization wear it just because it looks good. To be honest, we care about something which actually serve the customers. However, in the current platform, the OCR and the computer like vision thing, it's quite uh, important that it is really efficient. And yes. the data comes in Arabic language and in English language and comes as well scanned sometimes. When it comes to the OCR, it's very mature for English language. I can see like a lot of examples which are quite easy and plug and play. When it comes to the Middle East and the different languages, I don't think the models which are available publicly, they are really doing good job. And we've like put a lot of efforts in, into building something which is robust works at all the templates and all the formats which are available in the market, being robust and always giving very good accuracy when it comes to the data reading. And the other part, which is quite critical for us to use machine learning uh, for, uh, when it comes to the actual uh, underwriting uh, experts or uh, actuarians, they're actually using forecasting models to predict or like to estimate how much you're going to cost the insurance company after six months of of your like you know current six months bar, however that forecasting it's statistics it's not really like a predictive modeling. When you compare like the accuracy, maybe it's seventy percent or eighty percent, and obviously like when you use some predictive modeling which is a bit more accurate, it's fitted to the data and the specific behavior of your employees, then you can just go and get something like ninety six percent predictive accuracy, and that's quite important for you to get a better pricing and more indicative. The right pricing for how much it's going to cost you to renew your insurance policy. So these two elements are quite important. In addition to the optimization bit, when it comes to multiple, like there are several factors there. They are very important in any health insurance policy, the co-payment, the coverage, the medical network, the classes, uh, the distribution employees over classes. There are plenty of, of, of factors. Using a right, a, a very good optimization algorithm, which find the best uh, parameters and the best distribution of these different parameters to get the best price is a quite a, a challenge. And we use obviously like some uh, cutting edge machine learning algorithms that we have built in house for doing that optimization bit, which is quite important to achieve the end goal that we're trying to achieve for our customers. Understood. I have, I have another um, a qu a question, less, perhaps less technical. Uh, because we don't often speak to people who are working in the Middle East, which yeah. uh, is fascinating uh, to do. Um, what are the, um, the biggest differences? Because on the one hand, we always have the idea that if we talk about, let's say, building platforms and AI and algorithms, that it's, it's everywhere, it's exactly the same. Right? You can use Facebook or Google, and everybody probably on the, uh, has it, the same screen the same function on this screen but what are the differences in the let's say for you 
as you know, all those different markets, eh? you know, the UK, you know, the US, etc. What is different in, in, in where you are active now? Definitely, for sure. That, that's a great question, Tom. Thank you. Uh, to be honest with you, like, I've just done uh, like different work at multiple companies where our focus markets were Europe or UK or US, as you've mentioned. And surprisingly, whenever we deploy any model, it's quite, you know, it works well. Things are, are quite uh, straightforward because very often like these different models, they're getting trained at data coming from these different geographical locations. However, uh, when we just uh, obviously like started working in the Middle East, we've discovered that there is a massive gap when it comes to the data availability that mm -hmm. publicly have access to and and it does not uh, and it represents the middle east market saudi arabia united arab emirates or like uh, other big markets and and surprisingly uh, nick and tom it's quite a big market so for example in saudi arabia when it comes to the health insurance we're talking about above 8 billion dollars of health insurance premiums the total mm -hmm. It's a quite a, a big market when I compare it, for example, with, with Pakistan market, like where it's like nearly like 230 million people. And the, 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 the premiums over there when it comes to health insurance, it does not make around 20% of what, what mm -hmm. premium is getting paid in Saudi Arabia for from 30 million people. But the government there makes health insurance mandatory for all people who are living there and makes the market quite interesting. Uh, and... Obviously, coming back to the differences, the data availability, the data type, the language used, the 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 let's say the models that they are trained to to be used for such data which is available uh, in in the Middle East, all these different things are actually playing part at at making the challenge uh, harder, like to to basically like build something that really works for the Middle East market, and obviously one of the most important things, the regulations. Here, regulations as like uh, we're talking about country which which has a lot of changes uh, over time, uh, positive changes. Uh, I mean, that as, as I observe it, I can see regulations. They are actually moving quite uh, fast as well. And to like build a technology that can work like in a in a in an adaptive way to these different changes that happens over there, it's a quite like a, a challenge when it comes to like our sector and what we're focusing on. Would you because. If I'm if I'm just playing this back, one of the is is that yeah the training sets are different, um, the 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 language, so the alphabet, right, and everything that that entails is is different. Have you, um, and by nature of working with large corporates, they st and if you do a job well, they start to suggest certain problems that they might have. Which problems have you already been? requested um that you that they're currently not on your roadmap um but that um you could also empower with your you know trained model that works within you know your 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 geography in the in the in the in a kind of regulated space and you know with the guardrails that someone would need in order to start feeding that type of data into a model have you have you had certain discussions that are um, around that topic? Definitely. So, so we have been very focused on health insurance problem solving, and that's we built a very robust model that and like a platform that serves over than five hundred different corporates in Saudi Arabia. Uh, however, one of the like few of the major requests that we received from these different corporates that we work with that they want to have one stop shop. They don't want to buy health insurance from us and then go and like general insurance somewhere else or motor insurance somewhere else. So like they have been requesting to do the same exercise for the other insurance types. And that was not really like one of our priorities back then. However, recently, I mean, we're, we're raising a, a series, a, a pre-series A round uh, at the moment. And one of the, a few of the main, like you know, important things that we're going to be working on is to expand our offerings, to go towards motor insurance, general insurance, life insurance as well, because the the the, the markets are growing here when it comes to it. And, and it's quite uh, uh, like important to take whatever learning experience we have had with health insurance and map it to the other insurance uh, insurance types. That makes the offerings more like, let's say, uh, concrete to our customers and, and like make them as well, like have all their needs when it comes to outsourcing the health, the, the insurance policy for all the different types in one place, which is hopefully decisive. 
it would you then but it's still i guess what you what you're saying your your um the the assets that you've built one is that great access to five percent of you know these 500 corporate cu customers um plus a localized um ocr data cleansing um interpretation uh model that is fit for local regulation is is that a fair assessment that those are two of the kind of key key assets exactly plus uh, obviously taking into account all the data protection yes like pipeline we're actually like uh, we're we're building a, like a unique data set that is actually representing the markets that we're working in which is very important like for ourselves as a company operating in, in, in this market and as well to partners to utilize this data, which is fully obviously uh, anonymized and it does not violate any any privacy uh, regulations so that, that we can actually, uh, let's say, uh, elevate the level of uh, maturity when it comes to the technologies that are being used in, in the markets that we're operating in. So that's another thing which we're actually focusing on and we have it as one of our key milestones. But I guess it's fair to say that um, there's there's more but you more opportunity as you currently see it to to expand, let's say, uh, insurance products and services within Saudi Arabia than trying to export the current um, employee benefits thing into other uh, Middle Eastern countries. Is that is that a Fair assessment, or, do you, or can you do both? Uh, to be honest with you, there are markets which are similar in behavior when it comes uh, like to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. For example, Oman, it's one of the biggest insurance markets in the Middle East, and it's quite similar when it comes to the Saudi Arabia market. United Arab Emirates as well, that's a, a, like a third interesting market, and Iraq. These four different markets, they are big in size, and the behavior of the insured members and uh, corporates and all of these different things is like more or less, you know, uh, I would not say identical, but similar to each other. Mm -hmm. So we're actually thinking about these markets for expansion, but uh, for now we're focusing at the Saudi market because as you mentioned, we've just like acquired 5% of the market when it comes to our current offerings. And there is still plenty of, uh, of like fish in the sea. We can obviously like expand our offerings. We can get more customers and we can as well maximize like the benefits for our customers by actually offering other services for them. Absolutely, absolutely. No, and I, I was just thinking that there is, uh, and that's the the nice thing about a a corporate B two B play, um, is that if you are if if you get that trust, they'll they'll kind of nudge you into a certain direction. It's also a risk, but but they'll 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 present opportunities even pre product uh, um, sometimes. And when they'll be, so for example, I would not be shocked if some of the insurance companies would say, you know what, that would, or some of the, it would actually be quite interesting if you, we could just do, you know, because all of the existing policies are on paper and are there and would actually make our quotation process a lot easier. It would actually help us in our quotation process, kind of knowing what the existing insurance policy looks like. Um, and that that in and of itself could be a great um, market um, and and business development opportunity. Mm, I'm just kind of conscious of time a little bit here, and um, I wanted to kind of give you the room. Do you is there anything that we that we haven't touched where you felt we we fell a little bit short in terms of our questions that you kind of want to share? Um, then now would be a great time. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, like uh, actually following on your last point, which is uh, one of the things that we're actually like, you know, exploring. We're, we're at the moment uh, exploring the full integration with insurance companies where we can make the process easier for our customers instead of them like getting that indicative pricing and, and like getting, for example, certain like guideline for them like to do better negotiation when it comes to their health insurance policy we're actually trying to make the complete the cycle to them by integrating with the insurance companies and as you mentioned like building the technology in a place uh, actually helping us in doing that integration which will help us as well in making the customer journey much easier and this is really like our goal at the end of the day we want our like corporates to have a better experience when it comes to renewing their health insurance policy and ultimately like help the employees 
have like really what they need when it comes to the different benefits they're having and maybe the same medical network so they don't need to get like you know disrupted by changing the provider of the health insurance which actually happens very often obviously looking for the best premium and one of the things that we're doing actually we we believe that we have uh, quite strong capabilities when it comes to our tech people to our like team that works like to serve the the, the, the Saudi Arabia from the UK Jordan e Egypt and even Saudi Arabia so we have assembled assembled quite a strong technical team obviously uh, and and we have brought like a few of the best cutting edge algorithms that have been built uh, let's say like in the UK and in, in, in abroad and just we've customized it and localized it to the market that we're operating in. And this is a quite a strength when it comes like to what we're actually building at the moment. So we're exploring even projects with our customers, as you mentioned, like few of them have actually asked us to do projects when it comes to analyzing their data, to helping mm -hmm. them with building AI algorithms. And these are things that are quite uh, like motivating for us, showing that our customers are actually valuing what, what offering we're giving them. And it makes us as well more interested like, at looking at other products that we can expand to and uh, just offer as well like to our current uh, client base and the future ones as well. It makes, makes, makes perfect sense. And I think that's what most uh, uh, enterprise uh, businesses um, usually don't build products without the input of their customers. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's technically the, the way always. I mean... I believe in listening to the customers from day one. If yeah. it's quite nice to have a nice idea, but with all respect, I mean, I, nice ideas are all, all over the place. It's yes. just important what customer want to have. Absolutely. Um, I've just Tom. Asked, perhaps the last question, but just to come back to those, let's say, big international uh, brokers like Marsh or Aon, are you, are you mainly competing against, let's say, Marsh and Aon, or are you more competing? against other local, less technically oriented uh, companies, let's say uh, Saudi uh, companies, which, which, which don't have this uh, technical developments like your algorithms or, or uh, other, other technical stuff. What, what yeah. is the main, the, your main competitor you have yeah. to deal with? Well, well, to be honest, I, I think when it comes to brokerage, it's not only like getting the best insurance policy. Part of the brokerage work is actually the approvals, the service for the customers. There is a lot of uh, operations which is going on between like the, the corporates and the insurance company, which the broker does apart from the renewal. So when it comes to the size of an, and the offerings that we're having, it's actually like complementary to what brokers are doing. Brokers, they have like the the employees and the staff on, on the ground to help with the approvals, to help follow up with the cases, to help with getting the best service for the different corporates. When it comes to the analysis and the pricing and all of these different things, as we have observed in the market, it's actually like a, it's like an, 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 an additional, let's say, feature. Okay. Some brokers have, some brokers don't have. And surprisingly, as you've mentioned, uh, Tom, I mean, these big uh, obviously like international brokers, we have few of their customers. They're actually using our platform. And they're... they're oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, they're looking at it as like what these different brokers are actually offering. It's more like consulting, uh, let's say, reports. They're not interactive and they're not tailored to their needs. However, what Decisive is offering is a completely something which is tailored to the corporate's needs that they can play with, they can change. And completely like to the benefit of the customer. I'm not saying the brokers, they're not really like, they're always like, you know, obviously putting the customers at top of their priorities, but that's a very diplomatic way of saying it. But at the end of the day, uh, obviously they have interest in, in getting uh, some commission out of the premium that they're going to get. And obviously if the premium is higher, they're going to get a better commission. However, when it comes to the size of our model, it's subscription, like it's just straightforward with the corporates. And we're just actually trying to make sure that these corporates are getting the best value for money when it comes to their insurance policies. Okay, thank you. Makes sense. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Um, I wish you all the best with the um, fundraising. Um, sounds like, um, you know, should be a walk in the park. Um, and yeah, all the all the best in your in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And 
Um, hope to see you at some point face to face on the InsureTech circuit. Thank you Definitely. so much, Saeed. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks a lot, Tom. It was really a pleasure uh, to be hosted by, by you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye.